Hello everybody, Jake here for FM Scout and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys the ideal squad size in Football Manager which will hopefully keep your guys squads happy without any complaints about playing time and therefore improve your team dynamics and improve performance on the pitch. Now of course there's no exact science to the exact team size that you should have but this one has worked for me for a long time. It's something I do whether I'm playing with a top division or low division club and I very rarely get a complaint about playing time the only time I do is if I'm purposely making sure someone doesn't get game time in order to force them out we're looking at you Danny Drinkwater so in a few seconds I'm going to quickly go through how many goalkeepers defenders midfielders attackers you should have in order to get your guys squads firing at the highest level but before we get into that I just like to say if you do enjoy the video don't forget to hit the like button it really helps us out to push these videos out to more people and if you want to as well feel free to comment down below how you guys manage your squads how you keep people happy and if you are enjoying the content then consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already we're getting close to 104,000 subscribers now which will be the next goal so if you want to hit that subscribe button that would mean a lot and finally if you want to hit that notification button too it will mean you won't miss any of our uploads and if you have already hit that button then just check the settings because I'll show it on the screen now but YouTube recently changed it so that you only get shown certain videos they think you'll watch rather than every video that a channel puts out so if you hit the all button on the notification bell then you'll be notified with every upload and you know if you decide you don't want to watch a video you don't have to click on the notification but that way you don't miss out on any content that can help you guys out so with that being said let's get into the video and start discussing squad size okay so here we are with my Chelsea team in my second season if you want to see me using this team a little plug here you can check out my channel in the description we're getting close to 900 subscribers over there now so if you want to head over there and help us get to that target that would mean a lot as we get closer to a thousand and while we're on the topic I also have a new Twitter that I'm going to be using for football manager stuff going forward so if you want to check that out too the link to that is also in the description but yes here we are with the Chelsea squad and I'm going to be showing you how many players I have in each position how many players you guys should have and this will apply to the majority of leagues of course there's probably some leagues because I don't know the exact details where you can only have, say, an 18-player squad, which will make things different. But for the majority of the top five leagues, this has always worked for me and leagues outside of it. For example, Holland and Portugal, it's all worked for me here too. And like I say, I also have a save with Mansfield in League 2, which is obviously lower division management. And I have the exact same squad size there. And it's all working out quite nicely for me. So we're going to go into the exact details of it all. And we're going to first start off with goalkeepers. So this is probably the most obvious one. And this is because obviously it doesn't matter on your formation. Every team's going to have a goalkeeper. At least I think they do, unless they've invented some new formation that makes your goalkeeper a striker or a centre back or a ball playing defender or something I don't know but um, yeah most of the time obviously all the time should I say you're going to have a goalkeeper in your team and I'm going to preface this by saying I do not think you should ever have more or will ever need more than 25 players in a football squad even if you're at the highest level for example me with Chelsea maybe there are some differences to this that I don't know about but I find a 25 man squad the way that I'm about to show you will cover anything from full rotation of a squad as well as if someone gets injured you can still do a full squad rotation if two people get injured you can still do it following this rule and you don't have to have players who aren't getting game time and dragging your morale down so goalkeepers it's always obvious you're going to have your main star goalkeeper the one that you play the majority of the time usually whether it's the league matches and your important European competitions or your important cup competitions if you're not a European team for me it's Donnarumma here he's very happy with his game time of course he's going to be he's my main starting goalkeeper now I like to have three goalkeepers and obviously you then have your backup goalkeeper in this case for me it's Edouard Mendy and I also have this guy here Carlo Ziga now Edouard Mendy the role of Edouard Mendy is to be my backup goalkeeper what he does is he'll likely play the cup games for me and I think what you guys should do for a backup goalkeeper go for an older player who's not going to expect too much playing time or do the exact opposite and go for a younger player who's not going to expect too much game time either but don't do for example my scouts have suggested I also buy Andre Onana who's obviously going to want to be a first choice goalkeeper that's going to make either one of Donnarumma or Onana unhappy and then you're going to get problems but I often find that goalkeepers they're the easiest to keep happy they're not too bothered for example here Carlos Ziga isn't actually a backup he's my emergency emergency backup goalkeeper the reason it says backup is because my director of football did a silly thing but this just proves how easy goalkeepers are to please he is not bothered at all that he is not playing and I think that works best for your third choice goalkeeper just have someone from the youth team preferably someone who's been homegrown at the club they're probably never going to get game time and if they do then something must have gone wrong but unless Edouard Mendy and Donnarumma both get injured out for a season which they're unlikely to as goalkeepers 
that would be the only way that Zeke would ever have to play more than one or two games in a row. So I think that's always best with goalkeepers. Have three, have one clear choice, have one that's a homegrown player to help with homegrown rules, who's never really going to play, and then have a decent quality, older, more experienced goalkeeper who knows he's not going to get much game time, but who is a very useful option if you ever need him. Okay, now moving on to defence, and the way I like to do this is I'm assuming here we're playing four at the back, but if you're playing five at the back with three centre-backs, this will also work in the same way. So what I always suggest is for every position, on the pitch so if we go here for goalkeeper for center back for right back or if you're playing five at the back like this then for every wing back for every center back i think you should always have one backup player in each position and i know that sounds really obvious but this is how i tend to do it of course you have your first choice back line but across the season especially if you're in the lower leagues i've found you get a lot of games and your players get very tired very quickly so you're always going to need backup options in each position so i like to have a full rotation defense so for example i have Ben Chilwell to come in for Nuno Mendes, Castagna to come in for James, and then as a backup for Zuma and Tomori, I've got Christensen and Ampadu. So I've got one backup for each position. If Zuma's out for a season, I'd be happy for Ampadu or Christensen to play. And you get the idea. You always want someone who's going to come in and be that backup player, whether it's just because someone's injured or whether it's just to rotate for a single match. But in this case, as you have guessed, that's three goalkeepers and then eight players in your back line. We've already used 11 of the 25 players I'm on about. Well, actually, we're going to use 12 because what I always like to have is a versatile defender who can work in a majority of positions just in case something happens and what I like to do there is by using a youth player. For example here we have Dujon Sterling now he's not expecting much game time at all but he is basically my defensive backup backup option and when he's played he's not done too bad to be honest played eight times last season and scored two goals and got one assist and had a 7.1 match rating so he's a very good player you're not always going to have this caliber of player really for emergency backup but having a versatile defender option out there means that if one of these guys does get injured for a whole season for example let's say Reese James out for a season Castagna has to play every game he's slowly going to get tired and tired he needs someone to rotate with him that's where Dion Sterling will come in and I always think it's good to use a youth prospect or something like that someone who's going to be happy just to get any game time who's not going to cost you too much in terms of wages and someone who's also going to be homegrown. Now I'm quite happy with the versatility that my team possesses. For example, I have Declan Rice who if needed could be a centre-back option because obviously Dujon Sterling couldn't play centre-back. So maybe you guys want to get an extra centre-back in there, have five centre-backs, that's fine, but I just wouldn't make the fifth centre-back someone who's going to expect game time. For example, I had Rudiger. I could have kept him for a fifth centre-back but he wants significant game time. He's not going to get it. I'd much rather use someone from the under 23s if needed or the under 18s because the likelihood is they're probably only going to play one or two matches a season. So it's not that important in my eyes. Now, again, as I was saying, if you're at five at the back, then you want two wing backs on either side and six centre backs because obviously you've already got three centre backs there. But that will balance out because you'll need less midfielders and attackers. So then what I like to do in midfield is a very similar thing. For example, here we play 4 3 3 Press. I know I'm not really reinventing the wheel here. I'm very simple with the way I do things. But we have a defensive midfielder and two central midfielders. Now, again, I follow a similar pattern to what I mentioned before, where I'm going to have one backup player in each position. So, for example, we have our main three midfielders here, Milinkovic Savage. Kante and Kamavinga and as backups to them I have Kai Havertz, Mason Mount and Declan Rice but you might have noticed already I also have Mateo Kovacic floating around in here and he is very important because his role is I get quite a lot of injuries in the midfield his role is to basically be the Dujon Sterling of our midfield now he could probably do a better job than having someone like Kovacic because he's going to expect a lot of game time but I've managed to convince him that he's not really part of a team anymore and he doesn't seem to mind it so it kind of works out for me but usually with a big player like him, he's going to kick up a fuss if he's not playing. So just be careful with that. And I would say, again, use a youth prospect. So therefore, we'd have seven midfielders. Now, again, I know a lot of people will then say, oh, but what if you want to change formation? Because then you've got no one who can play attacking midfield. Well, that's not true, because what I like to do, for example, with Mason Mount and Kai Havertz, they are versatile midfielders. I wouldn't buy six defensive midfielders and have defensive players playing in my midfield. I like the idea of being able to change things up. For example, if I wanted to do this, then Kante can act as a defensive pivot alongside Kamavinga. So we've got two defensive style people. We've got Havertz and Mount as more attacking style people. And then the likes of Kovacic and Savic, who can play anywhere from here backwards in the midfield, basically. So I always like versatility. And I think it's something that people miss out quite a lot. When you're buying players, do try and look for versatility in people and plan for all three of your tactical styles. If you like to play like that, I only usually have two. You can see here, this is what I mean. Sometimes I pop into this. Obviously, it's not Kamavinga, but Havertz would be there or Mount would be there. And that's how I like to do things. So then in the formation we're playing here, we've got two wingers and a striker. As you can already guess, we've got a backup for each one. Now, you are going to notice by the end of this that my team actually adds up to 26 players. 
but I don't really count a couple of them because they're basically just youth players who are in the under 23s but I have in the main squad just in case I need them so they are actually playing overtime for the under 23s but if there was an injury crisis we'd have someone there who wouldn't cause issues with squad spots because they are homegrown players so we should be okay and who are also not going to kick up a fuss so think about it more as the senior players we're talking about here. But yes as you can imagine we have a backup for each one of these so I have Tammy Abraham as a backup to Haaland to regularly rotate them. hudson Adoy has a backup in Christian Pulisic and Oyarzabal has a backup in Ziyech. Now again the versatility comes into play here because Mason Mount can also play on the wing, Kai Havertz can play on the wing, so I do have options there and I think you should always be on the lookout for them kind of players. The perfect examples are the likes of hudson Adoy, who can play all across these three positions and at a push could play striker, but let's forget about the striker part, he could play all three of these positions really well and be a really beneficial player no matter where he is playing in that midfield. And then as mentioned before we do have a youth prospect who can cover most of these positions. I used Tino Andrin last season for example. He could play both winger roles and if we needed him in the wing then one of the wingers could play up front and because of our versatility it meant we could keep a small squad that kept everyone happy and everyone knew their places. Now the backup 11 who are all well-known senior players were all getting game time because we were regularly rotating in cups and in Premier League games when it got a bit too easy or we had a big Champions League game on the horizon. And then in attack, midfield and defence and goalkeeper, we have an extra spare body, usually a youth player or an old getting on player who's not going to expect any game time at all and any game time is a bonus just to be around if we need them and to help with homegrown statuses. So I think that's the best way to lay out your squads but obviously there is the question of what if you don't have the money? If, if you're a non-league team, how can you afford to pay 22, 25 players, whatever it is? Well, I think the best way to do it then is again look for versatility where possible but I would think you'd usually get away with having one less centre-back, one less midfielder, one less attacker. You probably don't need a rotation player in every position. Some people are going to get tired, but you will have your development centre teams to at least give you somebody to have in there if things go really wrong. But I think the majority of teams, like I say, I was with Mansfield in League 2, and I didn't have the money to have a 25-man squad, but I did have a 25-man squad because what I did is I looked for the loans that required no loan contribution. I got players in that way. Just in case if things ever did go wrong, we'd be sorted. And I was always fully aware of the players in my development centre. So that if any issues did come about, we always had players to back up our team. Like I said, if you want to see how I do this with my Chelsea team, feel free to head over onto our channel. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But yeah, I hope this video did help you guys out, especially for you guys who are struggling recently. We've heard a lot of people are struggling with dynamics and keeping everyone happy. So hopefully this video was useful to you guys. I imagine quite a lot of the experienced players already do this or already have their own way of doing things and won't want to change it. But with the amount of new people coming onto Football Manager this year, I thought we'd help you out here because I remember having a lot of problems with this when I started. Not having enough depth or having too much depth, which causes way more problems than it's worth. So I hope this has helped you out. If it has, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video, guys. So thank you for watching and goodbye.